Hi everybody. On 15th of February 2024, the Supreme Court passed a landmark judgment and declared that the anonymous electoral bond scheme was unconstitutional and this sparked a major controversy about the political funding in India. Electoral bonds. After all the delays, all the legal tussles and all the political fights, the data is out. The Supreme Court there slamming the SBI, the State Bank of India for not disclosing uh, the full data when it comes to the electoral bonds. A five judge bench scrapped India's electoral bonds. They have to just submit the details of the donors and the details of the parties which redeemed the bonds on the other hand. On one side, while the electoral bonds are considered to be a safe instrument of political donation, on the other side, this electoral bond scheme is considered to be the biggest scam in democratic India. While on one side it is considered to be an instrument to curb black money transactions, on the other side it is considered to be a legal instrument of extortion in India. Electoral bond भारतीय राजनीति में से काले धन का वर्चस्व समाप्त करने के लिए लाया गया दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा एक्सटोर्शन रैकेट हिंदुस्तान की सरकार चला रही है हजारों करोड़ रुपए नरेंद्र मोदी की पार्टी को बॉन्ड्स में दिए गए सो एज यूजुअल लेट्स ब्रेक थ्रू दिस केयर्स एंड अंडरस्टैंड स्टेप बाय स्टेप What exactly are these electoral bonds? Why were they introduced by the NDA government and what exactly is their disadvantage because of which it is now considered to be a threat to the democracy of India? So as usual we will put out both sides of the argument so that you can decide which side you want to favor. And by the way a kind request to all the haters is that please watch the video till the end and then drop a comment because a lot of people make a judgment with just the first half of the video. If this is clear to you let's get started. But before we move on I want to quickly thank our partners of today's episode and that is Growth School. People major countries like UK and Japan are already in recession. Moreover, even in US, the biggest tech giants like Google, Microsoft and Amazon, they've laid off thousands of people. The World Economic Forum has estimated that more than 85 million people will lose their jobs by 2025 merely due to AI. So during this time, instead of fearing AI, you must embrace AI. And if you want to learn AI, ChatGPT and 20 plus tools like Midjourney, InVideo and Cloud AI, you must join Growth School's workshop. This workshop is actually a paid workshop, but for Think School viewers specifically, this is completely free. Not just that, the first 1000 people who register using the link in the description will also get a bonus worth 5000 rupees which includes 50 plus AI tools and their use cases and 250 plus prompts that you can use in your daily life at no cost at all more than 1 million people across the world including myself have taken this workshop and i have seen some extraordinary result in my daily life so whether you are a data or tech professional a freelancer a business owner a founder marketer or any other non tech role this workshop will be an absolute game changer for your everyday work so go ahead and register for this growth school workshop now People electoral bonds were introduced in the union budget of 2017 and 18 by our then finance minister Arun Jaitley jo electoral bonds ki yojana thi jiski budget mein maine ghoshana ki thi usko sansad ke samne rakh diya hai iske piche uddeshya ye hai ki jo chunav ki aur rajnitik dalon ki funding mechanism hai jo unko paise ke sadhan milte hain unko transparent aur saaf kiya jaye So the first question we need to answer is what exactly are these electoral bonds and why were they introduced As we all know India is known for its black money transactions and this black money was being used as an instrument by the corporations to make political donations Now some people might call this donation evil regardless of whether it is done in black or white And today if I declare that I am donating 10 lakh rupees to the Aam Aadmi Party all the BJP supporters and Congress supporters will start hating me But the reality is that business and political funding have always worked hand in hand. So if they are legitimate it's good. If not then it is bad for India. But at the end of the day both business and politics are two interdependent pillars of the market. I repeat business and politics are two interdependent pillars of the market. and businesses donating money to political parties is not a new thing at all it has been happening since 1947 so the question is why do these businesses donate money to the political parties and does it mean that they get unfair favors 
Well, let me explain. Let's say you are a solar panel manufacturer and you import your raw materials from China. And the current government has imposed an import duty of 100% such that the cost of your panels is shooting up from $100 to $200. And because of this cost shoot up, you are not able to compete with your European competitor who is able to sell the same panels at $150. But now if Congress comes up and declares that they will slash the import duty on the Chinese imported raw materials for solar panels, what does it mean? It means that if Congress comes to power, then your cost of solar panels will drop from $200 to $100 per panel. So if this comes true, you can beat your European competitors and you can make hundreds of crores by selling panels to Europe. So in this case, my question to you is, what would you do? You will obviously donate to Congress so that Congress can come to power, remove the import duty and you could sell hundreds of crores worth of products to Europe, right? But the problem over here is that if you donate money to political parties openly, then your Indian BJP customers might start boycotting you or sometimes a local politician might come and threaten you. And even worse, if you're a public listed company, then your stocks will come crashing down. So now the question is, in this given scenario, will you stop donating to Congress? Not at all. You will still donate to Congress, it's just that you will now make a donation in cash so that nobody knows that you donated and still your favorite party could win. And when hundreds of such companies fund their favorite political party with thousands of crores of donation in untraceable cash, black money is circulated and eventually the Indian economy gets affected. हमें देंगे तो जहां कांग्रेस का शासन है वो परेशान करते हैं इतना डर था बॉन्ड कितना मिला ये पार्टी के बैलेंस शीट में रिफ्लेक्ट होता है और बॉन्ड कितना दिया गया ये कंपनी के बैलेंस शीट में रिफ्लेक्ट होता है क्या गोपनीय बचा सो देयर आर थ्री डिसएडवांटेजेस टू ओपनली एडमिटिंग टू पॉलिटिकल डोनेशंस Number one, the reputation of the donors is tainted, which leads to loss in brand value. Number two, it might also lead to stock dumping and the deterioration of investors' confidence. And lastly, because of these consequences, black money gets circulated in the form of cash for political funding. So in the union budget of 2017-18, electoral bonds were introduced to make sure that political parties can get funding from businesses through a legitimate digital transaction and at the same time, the companies only have to declare that they have bought electoral bonds without the need to reveal which party they donated to. The way these bonds work is very similar to our coupons or gift cards and they have five major attributes. Firstly, any person or company can buy these bonds. Secondly, these bonds are issued in multiples of 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh and 1 crore rupees. Thirdly, there is no limit as to how many of these bonds can be bought. Number four, only those parties which have secured a minimum of 1% votes in the previous election can encash these bonds. And lastly, these bonds could be bought only at authorized SBI branches with check or digital payment only. So you cannot buy these bonds with cash. So if I bought a bond worth 1 crore rupees to donate to Congress, then Congress can use the bond like a coupon and redeem 1 crore rupees from the bank within 15 days. And if they don't redeem it, this money will get transferred to the PM Relief Fund. And this money could be used by the Congress for their campaigns. This is how electoral bonds work. If this is clear to you, let's come to the present scenario. As per a report by the Association of Democratic Reforms, a total of 28,030 electoral bonds worth 16,518 crores were sold between 2018 and 2024. And when we dug deeper into the papers that have been released by the SBI, we understood the following things. Firstly, the Bharatiya Janta Party or the BJP, they have emerged as the top beneficiary of electoral bonds, wherein they have encashed bonds worth 6,060.5 crores between April 2019 and January 2024. This amount is the highest among all political parties and BJP alone has a total share of 47.5% of the donations. Similarly, TMC secured the second spot with 1,609.5 crore rupees and Congress got 1,421.9 crore rupees. So now the question over here is, if these bonds were curbing the circulation of black money and still gave a legitimate instrument to the corporates for donation, then why did the Supreme Court call them unconstitutional? Well, the Supreme Court ruled against this law for three main reasons. Firstly, it went against the right to information of Indian citizens. Secondly, it said that 
the donor privacy should not be made as a quid pro quo measure don't worry about it i'll explain it in some time and lastly it said that unlimited corporate donations violate free and fair elections and hence it hinders the very thread of our democracy so now let's understand each of these reasons elaborately the first reason is pretty straightforward where the court said that the electoral bonds went against the right to information of indian citizens so in short if an important piece of information like this large scale donation to a political party is kept away from the citizens it is against the right to information act if this is clear to you let's come to the second reason to understand the second reason we first need to understand what is quid pro quo quid pro quo is a latin phrase which means something for something in this case the theory is that electoral bonds could be used to get unfair favors for example if priyanshi's company gets raided by the enforcement directorate for money laundering then the theory says that the political party in power could blackmail priyanshi to make her donate 10 crore rupees using the electoral bond and in exchange for this donation they will let priyanshi go so this way a political party could use extortion to get funding from businesses this is the reason why in twitter you must have seen a lot of people make connections between the ed rates and the donations made by these companies for example at least 14 out of the top 30 companies which purchased electoral bonds from 2019 to 2024 they faced an action by the central and state probe agencies Now mind you we cannot prove whether the ED rates and the purchase of bonds are interdependent or not because there could be two possible scenarios in the first scenario the money could be given before the ED rate for example Vedanta bought bonds between 2019 and 2022 but the ED rates probing money laundering in Vedanta happened in 2022 and in the second scenario the money could be given after the ED rates for example ED began a money laundering probe against Future Gaming in 2022 on assets worth 409.9 crores and just 5 days after that Future Gaming bought 100 crores in electoral bonds and just these two companies are amongst the top 5 buyers of electoral bonds similarly the fourth largest buyer of electoral bonds is Haldia Energy and they had been booked by the CBI in 2020 in a case of alleged corruption then we understood that Haldia Energy purchased bonds worth 377 crores between 2019 and 2024 and just like this there's a long list of 10 odd companies the list of which I will give you in the description so you can check it out and then you can make a judgment but the fact over here that we need to understand is that there is no clarity on three things whether the ED let them go because they donated money or the ED let them go because they were not guilty or the ED has not let them go at all So until now these two events that is the companies donating via electoral bond and ED raid these two are isolated events and until the high court or the supreme court makes a judgment we cannot draw a correlation between these events even though the theory of making these connections sounds very very interesting but at the end of the day if you ask me is this quid pro quo arrangement possible absolutely yes and lastly critics point out that there are some companies whose total share capital and revenue are just too low for the amount of donations that they have made for example quid supply chain private limited was the third largest buyer of electoral bonds at 410 crore rupees between fy22 and fy24 now this is a private company that was created in the year 2000 with a share capital of 130.99 crores and paid up capital of 129.99 crores that's 261 crores in total and in fy22 its net profit was only 21.70 crores with a revenue of over 500 crores in fy23 so critics point out that for this company to have bought electoral bonds worth 360 crores in a single financial year of fy22 it does not look practical and it makes more sense if this company has a backing from some large company and when we look deeper we found that according to hindu business line Quick is a manufacturer of warehouses and storage units and this company has links to Reliance Industries but Reliance has come out very clearly and clarified that it is not a subsidiary of any Reliance entity and here's where the facts get hazy so we don't know anything beyond this point if this is very very clear to you let's come to the third reason which says that unlimited corporate donations violate free and fair elections so let's understand this better You see before 2017 the companies could contribute 7.5% of their average net profit over the past 3 years. 
But after electoral bonds, since companies could donate unlimited amounts of money with anonymity, it opened up the possibility of shell companies which could be used only to rotate funds. So it is said that these electoral bonds could be used to channel undocumented black money into the political and electoral process of India. Now the counter argument to this is that if the government bans anonymity, then companies can still give cash, right? And they can still fund political parties and still ask for favors, right? Well, unfortunately, our system is not foolproof enough to prevent cash entirely. It's just that with electoral bonds, it just becomes a little easier to donate large amounts of money in exchange for favors. Thirdly, electoral bonds make it easier for foreign companies to spend money in Indian elections and influence our elections. And again, back when cash was used, it became difficult to transfer large amounts of money. But through electoral bonds, it was possible to transfer a lot of money and then influence the elections. So if this information is kept away from the public, then there is a very high possibility that a rich country might just pour in billions of dollars and influence the elections in India. And this is considered to be a threat to our democracy. And again, while this influence is still possible through a complex mechanism, it's just a tad bit more difficult. And lastly, critics also point out that big parties and big corporations together can dominate Indian politics as opposed to small parties and small businessmen. So in a way, it is evidently favoring bigger powers over smaller ones. But if you ask me, my humble opinion is that no matter which field or domain you pick, the bigger players, no matter what, will always have an upper hand over the smaller players, whether that is YouTube, politics or business. This is what we could make out from why the Supreme Court ruled against the electoral bonds. So as usual, now you can decide what is ethical and what is not and who is right and who is wrong. But I just hope you learned something valuable about business and politics from this case study. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube ever happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.